Okay, hey guys, and welcome to this video on atmospheric pollutants and combustion. Right, so in this video, you're going to be having a look at the different atmospheric pollutions, right, what they are. Uh, you're also going to have a look at the potential dangers of each one. So not all pollutants do the same thing. They don't all pose the same risk. And we're going to have a look at the different examples of that. And then finally, we're going to have a look at combustion equations, right? We're going to have a look at combustion equations for complete and incomplete combustion. And we're going to discuss the pollutants that are formed in those. So let's dive straight in now. Okay, cool. So we're first going to have a quick rundown of different atmospheric pollutants and their dangers. So first of all, carbon dioxide, right? We've all heard about carbon dioxide. It is a greenhouse gas, right? It doesn't really do anything else to us. It's not really very poisonous at all. Um, we breathe it out when we respire, right? But too much CO2 in the environment is a greenhouse gas. It is contributing to climate change. Okay, carbon monoxide, right? Carbon monoxide, very similar to carbon dioxide in terms of the formula, but it's a very different substance, right? It's extremely toxic to us. It causes breathing problems and death if you have too much. The reason it does that is because it binds to hemoglobin in our blood. Hemoglobin is the protein responsible with binding to oxygen. If it's bound to carbon monoxide, it can't bind to oxygen, and therefore we just can't get oxygen for respiration, right? So that's really bad. One thing to note as well is carbon monoxide is colorless, and odorless so you can't smell it you can't see it and so that's why having a carbon monoxide sensor in your house is so so very important right moving on soot which is just carbon right so soot or carbon this causes global dimming right we, we've all heard about global warming but what's global dimming basically those carbon particles reflect some of the sunlight coming in back out and so it actually causes less sunlight to reach the earth's surface Soot also, uh, you, you will have seen it in chimneys and stuff like that, especially in like old-fashioned films. It blackens buildings and it makes everything really dirty. Also, if you breathe in too much of it, it can cause breathing problems, which is no good at all. All right, then we've got sulfur dioxide or SO2, right? Now, sulfur dioxide in the air dissolves in the water in the air and it forms sulfuric acid, right? That then rains and it causes acid rain, okay? Now, acid rain is a, is a particular problem to certain kinds of rocks. Uh, if something is made of calcium carbonate, so limestone, then it gets on those rocks and it actually reacts and, and you get corrosion of the rocks. Also though, and more importantly in terms of ecosystems, it affects the soil and water supplies. If you get acid rain entering the soil or entering a water supply or both, then what you get is a drastic change in the pH. This can affect what can grow there. It can actually cause uh, all of your organisms to die or at least some of them to die. So that's no fun at all. Right, nitrogen oxides. You've got NO and NO2, right? But they're oxides of nitrogen. The, these are very similar uh, to sulfur dioxide in that they dissolve in the water in the air and they cause acid rain, except you'll have nitric acid instead of sulfuric acid, of course. Um, also, though, nitrogen oxides can trigger breathing problems, particularly in people with asthma, right? I've actually got asthma. Uh, don't worry about feeling sorry for me. Loads of people have asthma. But if you breathe in nitrogen oxides and you've got asthma, it can actually trigger asthma attacks, which is obviously a bad thing. Uh, okay, finally, unburned hydrocarbons. So, uh, hydrocarbons which are not fully burned. So if we're burning hydrocarbons for fuel, uh, like in order to get energy, some of them are not fully burned and so you still have hydrocarbons uh, emitted into the environment. Hydrocarbons like methane, for example, are greenhouse gases as well, right? That's no good. And also, if you're releasing those hydrocarbons without actually burning them for energy, then that's a waste of fuel because you're not getting the energy out of them. And so that's obviously a bad thing as well. Okay, so let's move on straight away to... Combustion, right, this is a overly dramatic drawing, but combustion is basically burning things in oxygen, right, as we will see here. So combustion can be complete or incomplete, right? Complete combustion is when a full, a fuel, sorry, not full, is fully reacted with oxygen, okay? So if you fully react with oxygen, uh, that is complete combustion, and you'll generally form carbon dioxide and water. There is an exception, which we'll look at first, which is the combustion of hydrogen, right? But anything like a hydrocarbon, if that fully combusts, you produce carbon dioxide and water. Incomplete combustion is where there's not enough oxygen, or the, the access to oxygen isn't great. And so what happens is rather than producing carbon dioxide, you produce carbon monoxide, which is less oxygen, or carbon, which is even less oxygen, right? And so soot. 
uh, and, and they are produced instead of carbon dioxide. And we're going to have a look at some equations, so don't worry if that was too quick for you. So, the first one is uh, the combustion of hydrogen, right? I mentioned this to start with because it doesn't actually produce CO2. But if you have hydrogen, okay, so hydrogen here, plus oxygen, right? So it's actually burning hydrogen and oxygen. What you get is just water, right? You don't get the carbon dioxide because there's no source of carbon. So you just get water. That's fine. I don't really need to go into any more detail with that. But let's have a look at the complete combustion of fuels. And remember, we said that complete combustion produces carbon dioxide. So I'm going to say CO2 plus water, which is H2O. Right. What you need to be able to do is balance these equations. And there is a very easy way to do it, which I'm going to show you right now. So what you do is you ignore the oxygens until the end because there are oxygens present in both substances on the right hand side. OK, so let's just get rid of that. Instead, I want to balance the carbons and I want to balance the hydrogens. Now, there are two carbons here on the left and there's one carbon here on the right in carbon dioxide. Well, those carbons must be the same, and so I must have two lots of carbon dioxide to give me two carbons on both sides. Then we have a look at the hydrogens, and the hydrogens, there are six in, uh, this is ethane, by the way, right? There are six hydrogens there, but only two on the right-hand side. And so therefore, I must have six on the right-hand side, which is three times two. Now I can count the oxygens. So I look on the right-hand side, and I say, how many oxygens are there? Well, there are two times two, which makes four there. And then three times one, which makes three there. Okay, and four plus three is equal to seven, which means I need seven oxygens on the left hand side, right? Well, O2, okay, how do I turn two into seven? Well, I times it by 3.5. Three point, oh, just terrible, terrible handwriting there. Just bear with me. 3.5, this is like not much better, but whatever. Okay, so 3.5, now everything is balanced. By the way, if you dislike decimals, or fractions, you can double everything now, right? If you doubled everything, then the ratios stay the same and you know it's still balanced, but it gets rid of the decimal, right? You don't have to do it, but you can. So if I doubled, I could say two, double 3.5, which is seven, and double two is four, and double three is six. Now I haven't changed the ratio, which means I already know it's all balanced, but I've got rid of the decimal, and so it's up to you. All right. Now I'm going to have a go at another complete combustion. Uh, down here we have an alcohol, right? Notice the OH, okay? And complete combustion forms CO2 plus H2O, right? By the way, if you want to have a go, pause the video right now and have a go at this question. That would be uh, good practice for you. Right, welcome back. If you did have a go, if you didn't, then you're lazy, but I'm going to go through it right now. Uh, just use a different color. So carbons, you've got three carbons in your alcohol here, right? Which is actually propanol um, and one carbon here. So I'm going to put a three in front of that. Then your hydrogens, you've got, now this is where you've got to be careful. In your alcohol, you have seven plus the hydrogen in the OH, which makes eight, which means I need four of those, right? Now you have to be careful again. I'm going to count my oxygen. So on the left hand, on the right hand side, sorry, I've got uh, three times two, which is six plus four times one, which is four. So I've got 10, right? And now you might think, well, I just put a five in front of the oxygen, but I actually don't because I also have this one in the alcohol. And so how many do I need to add to one to get 10? Well, it's going to be nine, right? I need nine more oxygens and nine oxygens, uh, bearing in mind oxygen is O2, means that I'm going to have 4.5, right? So 4.5 oxygens and as before you could double everything if you wanted to i'm not going to do it again but if you wanted to you could double everything and that'd be fine okay doke. so uh incomplete combustion so incomplete combustion i'm going to i'm going to show you two examples okay incomplete combustion is where you do not produce carbon dioxide instead you might produce carbon monoxide okay but you always produce water Okay, we balance this in much the same way as we did before. I'm going to go through this really quick. We've already done the method, so I'm just going to do it. Um, if you need to slow down or rewind, then please feel free to do so. So carbons, two, and so I need two of those. Hydrogens, six, so I need three of those. And now how many oxygens on the right-hand side? Well, one, two, five, so I need 2.5 of those. Okay, now incomplete combustion can also form soot, which is just carbon, right? And water as well. Right. And so the same fuel 
Uh, with a different equation, it's going to look something like this. I'm going to balance it again. So two, three. How many oxygens? Well, only three. So I only need 1.5. And then that's balanced, right? That's incomplete combustion. And now finally, sometimes you have a few. And, oh, by the way, let me just mention something really quick. And that is that these equations are very important. You need to be able to balance them. You also need to be able to predict what's going to be formed based on the fuel used, right? You're generally not going to be asked to write a full equation for an incomplete combustion um, out of nowhere. They'll generally give you the equation and then you might have to balance it. But you could be asked to write one for a complete combustion. And so just bear that in mind. Uh, okay, so now finally, some fuels or... or sorry, some substances found in crude oil have sulfur in them, right? And this is why we get sulfur dioxide produced as a pollutant, which we mentioned earlier, right? Now, in a combustion reaction of these, we end up producing exactly what we produced before plus sulfur dioxide, right? So you produce incomplete combustion, you're going to produce CO2 plus H2O plus SO2, and that's how we get SO2, right? And now you go ahead and balance. And I'm just going to do this really quick. Carbon, one and one. Sulfur, uh, you got, you've got two sulfurs, which means you need two of these. And also, you're going to get, well, that's actually a silly mistake by me. Um, notice on the left-hand side, there's no hydrogens, right? This particular fuel doesn't have any hydrogens, which means we can't produce water. Yeah, so bad mistake from me there. Um, anyway, this is what you get. You're only going to get carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide because there's no hydrogen in order to form water, right? This is kind of a special case. Uh, okay, and so then your oxygens, uh, you just need to balance those and say one, two, three, four, and so we need two. Okay? Uh, no, that's, that's a lie as well. I'm falling apart here. Two times SO2 means you've got four plus two makes six, which means you need three oxygens like that and now everything's balanced all right now the incomplete combustion and i've used a different fuel with sulfur in down here but this one also contains hydrogens right and so this one is going to be with water as well okay but you also produce sulfur dioxide because you've got that sulfur there and so now i'm going to balance that quickly two carbons makes two carbons six hydrogens makes six hydrogens Okay, one sulfur makes one sulfur. So great. Now we count the oxygens on the right hand side. Well, two times two makes four plus three times one makes three plus one times two makes two. That's a total of nine, right? So we need nine oxygens, which means we need 4.5 of those. And then that is us done. Okay, so sorry for that slight mishap up here. This one was actually kind of a special case. If you don't have hydrogen, you can't make water. If you don't have carbon, you can't make carbon dioxide, right? And, and that's what you saw with the combustion of hydrogen, okay? If you don't have sulfur, you obviously won't make sulfur dioxide, okay? But those are the things that are going to be produced. So I hope that made sense. That was a lot of information uh, in not too long a period of time, although it has been a relatively long video, I guess. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please write a comment below if you still have any questions on it. But as usual, please like and subscribe because that really does help me out. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.